Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Health Span. Today I'm going to take a look at a sugar, but it's a special sugar that lowers blood glucose and may help build muscle. The sugar is allulose, so let's have a look at what's so special about it. Allulose is a monosaccharide sugar, which is to say it has a single carbon ring. It is present in nature in small amounts. For example, in figs, raisins and jackfruit. It can also be formed when products with sugars are heated, but the estimated daily intake is less than 200 milligrams per day. It looks and tastes much like sucrose and is estimated to have 70% of the sweetness. It is an isomer of fructose with just this hydroxyl group positioned on the other side of the carbon ring. The commercially available products are also made from fructose. However, its chemistry is different from either fructose or glucose, and it is not metabolized by humans, which means it has zero calories. Although allulose is not metabolized directly, the gut microbiome may convert some to short chain fatty acids, which can be absorbed and could provide some caloric value. The FDA rates that it has about 0.4 kilocalories per gram. In comparison, glucose is rated at 10 times this, at 4 kilocalories per gram. Allulose was first accepted as grass, generally regarded as safe, in 2012. And in 2020, the FDA agreed that the maximum tolerable consumption for a 60 kilogram adult should be between 30 and 33 grams. The main side effect of too high a dose is gastric upset and bloating. Allulose can be used as a sugar substitute in coffee or cooking and such. This would certainly have the benefit of providing the sweetness with much reduced calories. But it can also be used as a supplement. Let's have a look how. One of the benefits of allulose is that it lowers the area under the curve for the glucose spike after a carbohydrate meal. For this, it looks like allulose needs to be taken before or with the meal in question. This is a forest plot showing the impact of taking allulose as a supplement with the meals. The paper considered 5 grams and 10 grams of allulose, and this is for the 10 gram results, which surprisingly for me had a slightly smaller effect size than the 5 gram, but both were significant. There was a total of eight matching studies, which were all human, randomized and placebo controlled. The way that glucose was measured was not consistent in the studies, so the units are measure of relative difference rather than an absolute measure of change glucose levels. This column shows the difference between the allulose and control, where a negative number means that the glucose areas under the curve were smaller without allulose. This is the same data shown graphically. The summary data is to the left of the midline, showing a lowering of blood glucose with an effect size of 0.26. The authors calculated that this would be a 13 to 14% reduction in the area under the curve. And there was a significant p-value of 0.03. A few mechanisms have been proposed for this effect. One is that allulose, being a real sugar, shares the same GLUT2 and GLUT5 transporters in the gut as glucose and fructose, and so may compete for these, slowing down their absorption. Secondly, it stimulates glycogen production in the liver, which pulls glucose out of the blood more quickly, and it also helps replenish the liver glycogen stocks after a workout. Also, allulose induces GLP-1 release in the gut, which helps keep you feeling full for longer, and so eating less. In summary, five or 10 grams of allulose reduces blood glucose levels after a carbohydrate meal. One other possible benefit for allulose I saw was in this paper. This is a mouse paper and so should be viewed as such. I will have a look at it in a bit more detail as it shows allulose helping to slow sarcopenia and grow muscle. It does this through regulating IGF-1 and myostatin. Here are the details of the trial. The mice were C57BL6, a common inbred lab strain. There were 21 old mice at 48 weeks of age. This is roughly equivalent to somebody in their mid-50s, as well as seven mice as young controls. All the mice were male. The old mice were split into two groups, a negative control NC group and an allulose group, or all. It says that there were seven in each of these groups, so maybe the 21 number was the total for all the mice. 
So this is not a large number of mice. The mice were fed AIN93G, which is a standard mouse chow. In the allulose group, the cellulose component of the chow was replaced with 3% allulose. I converted this to milligrams per kilogram and then into human equivalent using allometric conversion. My calculation was that it would be about one gram for a 70 75 kilogram person. However, the calculation is quite complicated and I may not have got it right. I don't think it's worth going into the details here, as we have the doses from the human trials, which varied from 1.2 to 12 grams per day, with most in the 5 to 10 gram range. In these and subsequent slides, YC are the young controls, NC are the old negative controls, and all is the group on allulose. The hind leg thickness was increased, though it was only significant in comparison to the body weight. Allulose mice lost weight, so this may show an improvement in body composition rather than just muscle size. Grip strength increased with respect to body weight as well. Other muscles also showed a similar increase relative to the body weight in the allulose group. They looked at the genes being expressed in the muscle. IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor 1, decreases with age, but this was partly reversed with allulose. This is going to be controversial as in longevity, it is often suggested to keep IGF-1 low. However, IGF-1 has many functions, and one of these is to promote muscle tissue growth, where it is essential, so increasing it will help with muscle synthesis. On the other side, myostatin increases with age and causes muscle breakdown. The increase seen in the old controls was totally reversed in the allulose group, showing a reduction in muscle breakdown. It is the balance of muscle synthesis and breakdown that is required for maintenance of muscle mass, and allulose appears to be tilting the balance back towards muscle growth. Are there any concerns with allulose? This paper provides a review as of 2021. I will cover a couple of the points that they mention. The first is that allulose, which is absorbed, is not processed in the body and gets excreted in urine. This has the effect of increasing the sugar content in the kidneys and urinary tract. So is there any concern with infection? The concentration of allulose in urine from someone who ate between 10 and 40 grams was, between, was about 10 millimole, which is higher than normal. SGL2 inhibitors, which are anti-diabetic and potential longevity drugs, work by inhibiting the reuptake of glucose from urine and cause the sugar levels to raise to an equivalent number. A review of SGL2 inhibitor users found no increase in urinary tract infections, indicating that this level may not be an issue. Secondly, there was also a concern over the possible pathogenic bacteria, in particular Klebsiella pneumoniae, which has the ability to metabolize allulose. However, the data is not at all clear on whether allulose increases K pneumoniae presence, and the microbe is just as happy to use glucose in any case. So in summary, there was no strong concerns. Interestingly, in this paper, they said that allulose doses up to 23 grams metabolized by commensal bacteria to short-chain fatty acids were not significant, implying that the total calories should be zero rather than 0 0.4 kilocalories, as proposed by the FDA. Glucose spikes are implicated in the risk of diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and other organ damage, even if the fasting glucose levels are in the normal range. And the glucose lowering effect of allulose in humans seems quite robust. The protection from sarcopenia in is in mice, so much more uncertain. Personally, I cannot use allulose as a sugar replacement as I don't eat any sugar. So I am planning to try it as a supplement before meals, particularly on gym days, as I would like all the help I can get in building muscle mass. I will let you know how I get on. In the meantime, please let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for your attention, and I will speak to you again soon.